y'all. We're going to do another video with the Arteza uh, water brush pens. So we've got all of our pens here and then our water brush. It's going to help us blend everything together. Obviously, I've already done um, some quick work here. This um, was just done with a Micron, so any oil-based or just waterproof pen you have um, is perfect for getting down your first lines before you jump into painting. If you don't have anything that's waterproof, go ahead and pencil in where you want everything to go. Do your water and then let it fully dry, and then you can go back over with any pens you have around to get any of those really nice clean lines. Or you can just go completely in with uh, your brushes. So... I think we're gonna do something kind of fun. We've got our face here. We can play around with doing some hair, getting a little abstract, maybe doing like some water and then putting like some little fish or something in there. We'll see how it goes. So just to start, um, I've done my face here, um, but we're gonna start now into the hair. Our hair kind of grows up and out of our head. It doesn't kind of just grow straight out. So I'm gonna let that curve around the form of our head choose where I want my part to be. We'll go for like a middle part here. Do something kind of wavy. And I'm just getting those base lines in. I'm not going to get too precise with this because it's watercolor. We want it to, to blend and move. And our hair isn't just one color. We've got, you know, darker roots usually, some different highlights coming through, be those, you know, natural or added. Some little flyaways happening. I'll go back in with my brush now and start to move some of those blues around. Play around with how much water um, you use. With a lot of water, you're going to dull down those colors a little bit, but you're also going to get a more watery effect, which, if that's what you're trying to get, is the way to go. Can go back in and keep layering into that water as well. Let's see, maybe pull some of this blue from up here into the eyebrows. some little fish kind of swimming up through her hair. So I'll sketch those in. Blue and orange are complementary colors, so those are really nice contrast in our actual image here. Play around with how different colors work together. not going to get too complex on those because I know as I keep working those may start to blend and get smudged so I don't want to commit too much to making them perfect. And now since I'm kind of speeding through this for the sake of showing my process but Watercolor is a great medium to really let sit and come back to. 
some of these really wet spots are going to dry into really gorgeous little splotches and uh, sections if you just let them be. So you can really flood your paper um, to get some of that. But for the sake of time, we'll work a little bit faster. Water flying out. A little bit of green in here. I'm going to dive in a little bit to the skin here. Um, you can play a little bit around with this a little bit more, do something that isn't necessarily natural. Um, doesn't have to follow the rules, but we'll go for something with a little bit more a natural skin tone. I'm just watering down some of that brown here, and I'm starting applying it where I think my shadows would work best. So places like in the creases of eyes, in your ear, under my nose here, I'll probably do that and that way the biggest bulk of my color is getting laid into those shadow areas so it doesn't matter if they don't completely blend out but you can also do a similar te technique to earlier where I was laying down the water first and then going in with my color to get a more diluted version of it you can play around with both of those techniques it will start to move some of these colors around it but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Watercolor is a lot looser. You can play around with your brush strokes a little bit more. Don't have to worry as much about everything being right perfect where it should be. Just kind of letting it do its own thing.
And since my hair started to dry a little bit, I'm going to go back in and add some more definition, a little more blue. The black here is good um, for adding in any last little like looser details you want. If you want some really refined lines like I was showing you earlier, you're going to want to do that with like an actual pen of some sorts. But for some kind of just like loose definition here in the hair, this brush is perfect. For shadows, you don't necessarily want to use black. If you look out into the world, there's a lot, very few true deep blacks a lot of our shadows are just going to be darker versions of the colors so her hair i'm more shading with deep purples deep blues and things like that rather than black but black can be a really good tool for some last minute contrast to make things pop a little bit more so i'm gonna add some of that to my fish here make them come out of the water a little bit i'm gonna have this guy kind of floating inside a little bit in the ear switch back to my brown move some of that around I got a little darker than I wanted push that back up into the hair so nice thing about water colors is they do continue to move so even after it's dry you can to some degree go back in with a little more water just move that around, push it back into place. Awesome. So you can keep adding on to that, let it dry, add some inks into it, or just be happy where it is and start something new.